Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who did this when he found out his wife has been cheating on him with another man. Here's the full story with multiple updates. Two weeks ago on Sunday, our 12th anniversary, 16 years total, my young son hands me his iPad to help with a game, and a very racy text pops up via messages. I thought it was a mistake at first, because there were so few issues in our relationship that I couldn't comprehend this being something she'd do. We seemed to have such good teamwork with the kids, but our sex life had become slow. She started her own business and was still taking care of so much of the house, which I obviously should have helped more. But this was never a topic of discussion, so I didn't realize just how off things had gotten. I freak out. I'm on the floor shaking in disbelief. When I finally compose myself, I call her and ask, are you cheating on me? Not right now. Again, I can't believe it. She says she's coming home. We have it out, and I am in absolute shock, just like the lot of you folks who've come to the same awful discovery. Later on, I say I'm willing to go into therapy for this to try and save our family of four from having to go through the absolute trauma of divorce in separate families. We've each been to two sessions so far, one together, one individual. We've done a lot of writing in an attempt to get our emotions out on paper and evaluate the marriage, I guess. She's distant, but still in the house with me and the kids. I've taken to preparing just about everything now, including some of the kids' lunches, but dinner every night plus all the laundry, all the work she used to do on her own. If I had done this a year ago, I would have realized just how much work she put in and how stressful it was. She says she doesn't want to hurt me more by talking about her feelings, but it's been weeks since she's really talked to me about anything of substance. I finally got her to open up a bit this morning, and it seems like she wants to blame me for our situation, without truly accepting any responsibility for her life and the kids she'd split up if she opts for divorce. Those kids love us both so much, and they're completely accustomed to having us both around no matter what. I find it hard to believe that with what we've built together over the last 16 years that she'd give it up for someone who she believes might be a new soulmate. She's known him for three weeks. Somehow, this emotional connection she's got to the guy has shaken her to the point where she believes we've had no happy moments in our life together. It's caused my anxiety to skyrocket and to suspect those of our friends who are closer to her. I've probably destroyed those bonds despite them knowing nothing about the trust. I solemnly regret not taking on more house duties, but we never talked about the issues. She's now saying are her reasons for questioning our relationship. What do I do? I still love her without question, and I want our kids to grow up with both their mom and dad. Thanks for your help. I really do appreciate your time. We rarely fought, and when we did I was the one to get upset or I caused the problem. The only time I know I was an absolute idiot was once when I was at my own birthday party. She kept trying to interrupt me while I was mid-conversation with someone and I treated her like a child. I'm talking, even relaying that makes me feel sick to my stomach. It's not who I am. I had been drinking, which is something I rarely ever do. And by rarely, I mean it's never more than once a year. This incident has been one she's hinged on. It never happened before that night, and certainly hasn't happened since, but it sticks to her. Typically when we have any kind of discussion, it's just a matter of her telling me what she needs or wants, and then I try my best to take care of it or make a plan. For instance, she wanted a bookcase in our living room, floor to ceiling, so I got with a woodworking buddy of mine and we just started planning. Had all of this not happened, I probably would have already started building. It took a while to get there, but the plan was in place and moving forward. That's pretty typical for how our lives have been. I never threatened her with divorce just to get my way or anything ridiculous like that, neither did she. Never once did we mention marriage counseling to one another for any reason. Now I wish one of us had. She's always been so focused on everyone else's needs that I just don't remember her asking me for emotional help. If she was serious, sat me down and said something like, we need to talk about this, I know for damn sure I would've listened intently and helped in any way I could've, even if it meant supporting her from the sideline. When it came to this situation, before she even did anything with AP, she said she wanted to talk to me but was afraid I'd be violent with her. I've never ever touched her in any such fashion. Not once, I'll hit my controller when I get upset at a game, but I have never laid a hand on my wife. Not on our worst day. This was asinine to me and hurt almost as much as being cheated on and lied to. Unfortunately, she seems like she's done with me, 
and nothing I say makes it better. When I brought up my personal request to not be separated from the kids, she got angry. I'm sure she believed I was trying to manipulate her into making a decision. Sure, a large part of me hopes she will consider them too, but that's really what I want, to continue to see the kids on a daily basis. I'm very upfront with her and have continued to be through this whole ordeal possibly too much. Last Sunday, she dropped the bomb, I've been manipulative and she needs out of the house. I took this to heart and believed her. Hours of disbelief that I could be that person, and a fair amount of crying followed. She very well may be right, but over the last few days I've been the one receiving the manipulation. Also she's been depressed and never mentioned that could be a possibility to me or any of her friends. Like ever, I may have been too close to her daily to see the signs, but someone would have noticed, right? I honestly don't know as I've only had close proximity to anxiety. She has moved into her parents' house, which doesn't have many rooms, so I have no idea how this is going to work for her. Plans to keep my oldest, 7-year-old, during the week to take her to school, while I keep our 4-year-old to take him to school. Currently, they go to separate schools on very different sides of town. Edit, I heavily protested splitting the kids and told her she needed to pick up our oldest from my home. Got a sob story about having to wake up too early to make that work. I nearly told her that this is all her fault and to deal with the consequences. In the interest of not upsetting our situation even further and escalating to an argument, I acquiesced unwillingly. Thanksgiving was the absolute worst day for me, but it requires some backstory. I had agreed to go over to our mutual friend's house, a couple who also have two kids nearly the same age as ours. This is my wife's best friend, and perhaps due to her high level of intelligence, is never wrong. Let's call her Jill. Jill is married to Bill. Now, to be fair, I poisoned the well a bit on Discovery Day by assuming Jill knew about my wife's other guy, and accusing Jill pretty directly before my wife got home for the big fight. She got upset I had assumed as much and berated me as I apologized to her in person the following day, said something about being careful so this wouldn't turn into resentment. I was weak and accepted this as necessary. That has changed. Now I'm angry and have been for at least three days prior to Thanksgiving. In fact, I found out on Thanksgiving Eve, Jill had called my mom to tell her that they love me and are worried about the kids, and that I haven't reached out to talk to them about the situation. Excuse me, you didn't call me, you called my mom. I sent Jill a text that said my mom was worried by this, but I'm doing just fine and if they wanted, I was willing to talk to them on Thanksgiving Day. Up to them, she refused outright, saying it wouldn't be proper and she hoped she wouldn't have to remind anyone of that. She's got this teacher, parent hat she puts on even when talking to friends. It's definitely a point in the con column, because it's fake and ridiculously holier than now. Despite this seeming like a cop-out, as I was sure there would be some downtime, I replied cordially with of course. That's why I left it up to you. Wife has had the kids for Thanksgiving Eve, and they all stayed the night, quite uncomfortably, at Jill and Bill's. Not many rooms there either, but apparently the high level of discomfort and my 7-year-old's allergies plus asthma wasn't enough for her to bring the kids home for the night. That's fine, make them suffer along with you. Thanksgiving Day, I head over at about 1pm. So far, I've played with my kids, cleaned up a little, tried to help and been told no, and generally let my wife have her space. It hits about three, and my four-year-old needs something they can't solve at Jill and Bill's. Bill, ever the gentleman, seriously, hops out to the med store and purchases the item necessary, comes back and offers us the item. You didn't have to do that. Thank you, I said. Paraphrasing here because I was so surprised by this next bit, Jill says, at least forward progress was made. I start in with a well-reasoned oh, well we tried X before that and we made some progress. Forward progress was made. Needless to say, I was shocked. She attacked me for thanking her husband and trying to give some context to an easily explained position which I believe benefited from clarity. I turned to head for the door, briefly reconsidered, then opened it anyway. I sat in my car and took some deep breaths while attempting to find some semblance of logic for my next move. I decided that this was just too much of an uncomfortable situation for everyone involved and despite how much I wanted to sit with my kids and eat, I had a much greater desire to be out of that house if I was going to continue to be treated in similar fashion, especially if it was in front of my kids. I weighed how it would look if I just drove off, thought better of it, then headed inside to tell my oldest I'd be leaving. But why? Because it's just not necessary for me to be here today. I love you so much and I'm sorry. I will see you tonight if you want to come home. Just have mommy call me, okay. I can come pick you up. She was sad, but I think she understood. Luckily, no one except us adults were inside for that idiotic attack. I left and spent Thanksgiving alone at home. 
I called my mom to vent, and she wanted me to go to a hundred other houses for dinner, but I had an inkling that no matter where I went, I'd bring the party down. The rest of the day was too fresh and stressful. After getting home, I sent Bill a text, apologizing for leaving. He told me they love me, that I'm welcome to be there, and didn't know why Jill turned on me like that. I replied that I didn't know either, but I'm no longer comfortable being there. I thanked him for his kind words. That was the last I've heard from them about this situation. No apology from Jill. I don't expect one. We've hit resentment, thanks to her reaction to something wholly inconsequential. Imagine if it had been important. I've had both kids since Friday and they've made all the difference. I feel almost 100% just having them in the house. We're all still sad and prone to a bit of crying, but I think we're getting better a bit at a time. She moved out after cheating on me and decided to split our kids during the week to which I protested and she gave me a sob story about why she couldn't pick up our eldest from our home in the morning. Well, having gone along with it for this week, my youngest just asked me when is mommy coming home. I said, mommy's not coming home, and nearly threw up in my mouth. I feel so horrible telling him this. How do I make it easier on him and me too? Sometimes he's okay after I've said it, when he has relied on her so heavily for four years. I know you'll never read this, because you've somehow transitioned from a loving mother who cared deeply about family, and had strong opinions on cheaters into what you claim to despise. I get it. He was there and smelled good. Here's what else I get. You're childish, a piss-poor communicator, and a selfish idiot who tries to do way too much to fill this void you don't even know you have or why it's there. You say you love the kids, and while that may be true, you've presented the worst possible example of how a relationship works to them and additionally chosen a terrible friend to confide in. You can't even tell your friends what you really did because you're too embarrassed, but saying sorry and asking for forgiveness from me or our kid who actually understands what's happening. No, not in your wheelhouse anymore. You gave yourself permission by claiming I was manipulative. For over 14 years, you acted pretty damn happy for someone who was being constantly coerced. I always showed you love and gave affection, even when I was just passing you in the house. Saying otherwise is a lie. And you know it, and I can't wait to hear you say it because you know it's not true. You went on your first cruise ever with a female friend instead of me, red flag in hindsight. You bragged about the bartender and how you were sure he was into you. You went to a convention to work, something I thought the kids and I could enjoy with you, but you made sure we didn't come. There was no room for discussion. You went other places and told me about the men you saw and swooned over, but did I ever once say anything along the lines of, hey, I don't want you doing this anymore. No, want to know why? because I trusted you inherently. I thought they were harmless fantasy. You always thought I'd have been the one to cheat on you, and boy I sure had the opportunities. Guess what? I have a conscience. I have vows. I made a promise to you. Strangely, you made the same promise, but it meant F all when you found your construction worker. What a damn cliche. He's got kids from at least one, but I actually think it's two other marriages, so yeah, I'm sure he's a winner. Why didn't you just effing talk this out with me instead of acting like a child? You disgust me, and I hope the kids don't have to be exposed to you or your toxic family much longer. Today she hired a lawyer, I met with one too, but I was convinced I still wanted to go finish counseling and try to make things better. Today she told me our marriage will be no more. She's got zero qualms about what she did to our family. Somehow, I'm the bad guy to all her friends despite her infidelity. I don't have family around me to help get both kids to school like she does, but her housing situation is absolute trash. She's at her parents' house, planning on putting both kids in the same room in a bunk bed instead of what they have here at home. Each has their own room and bed. She went behind my back to have her friend set up to continue afternoon childcare, when I already told said friend she wasn't going to be needed anymore. I applied to have my youngest in daycare after school, in lieu of the friend, as well as set up transportation for him to set care. Youngest doesn't even want to go to the friend's house anymore. Kept saying he didn't want to go to school until I told him he didn't have to go to her house, then he was totally agreeable about going to school. Gee, I wonder what the problem was. What in the world has happened to my life? I don't know what she said to her friends to convince them, but she claimed I've been manipulative when we talked. Which is strange, because she's been gaslighting me for weeks now, claiming I've said and done things I just wouldn't say or do. I'll give you the short version I got from her lawyer to mine along with rebuttals. I have anger issues. I do not, unless it's one very specific video game where I have broken controllers three times over the last 15 years. Never resulted in anyone getting hurt other than me, 
and those were superficial to my knuckles. I have a short temper with our kids' disabilities. Admittedly, this may be true, but she seems to have endless patience with them, and rarely if ever scolds them for doing anything wrong. I see this as me putting up with less crap. They're still kids and require discipline. Additionally, neither is on spectrum which would require a different style entirely. I do not hit my children on anything other than their back, or a light but noticeable tap on the forehead to get attention. Also, I haven't touched our oldest like this in at least two years, probably more. She's really a solidly behaved child. I did yell at them or get frustrated easily though. That's on me and my anxiety. I have a gaming addiction. You could actually prove this is false by going to all the game systems we've got and totaling up time. My personal playtime for the last 8 weeks across all platforms would end up being less than 3 hours per week of solo time, and it's almost entirely on Rocksmith. X plays games too, so I'm not sure where this comes from. Maybe the AP feed in her lines. I cheated on her. Categorically false. I would willingly take a polygraph or undergo voluntary forensic research on my communications devices to prove it. I never so much as kissed another woman in any way that could be construed as passionate. I brought other women to the house and propositioned them for trio, half-truth, we talked about this between us a possibility, and agreed it was a mutual fantasy. When she told me she thought a girl was cute, attractive and I knew them, I'd cautiously approach about it if the potential third seemed interested. My ex would never feel comfortable, however, so I stopped inviting them over for any purpose other than usual friendly stuff. I've even talked to them since I heard this allegation, and one of them actually laughed at me when I told her. She couldn't believe how asinine it was. She also said she never felt pressured, or like my ex didn't know about the offer, because we talked about it out loud, being flirty in general. I have a strong belief that my soon-to-be ex-wife's best friend, let's call her A, encouraged my ex to stray by feeding her false narratives for months. A is married and also has two children. And I've come to learn, looking back on our interactions over the last five or so years, is ridiculously manipulative. Is it common for people like this to live vicariously? Is she also planning an exit? Was she just meddling because she could and somehow came to dislike me despite saying she loved us as a family? Admittedly, we had some weird dynamics, some occasional flirtation that would never go anywhere, and the occasional pat on the back both by her and by me which happened while my wife was right there, and she never seemed bothered. I stopped feeling comfortable with it after a while and cut down on these interactions over the last year or so. I have often wondered over the last two months if this played a role in her vilification of me. I don't know if a felt rejected or something. She never brought it up to me. The reason I believe it is to blame is her reaction when I asked her about knowledge of my soon-to-be ex-wife's AP. She got angry at me for assuming she knew anything instead of sympathy for being cheated on. I realize I'm untangling the skein of effed upness, but it's bugged me unendingly. Anyone have an experience like this? Has anyone here suspected being honey trapped after your separation by your cheater? I've got some potentially ridiculous suspicions about events that have occurred in the last few months, but I wanted to see if it's just me being paranoid. I don't want to share details, because if it's true, it means she knows this account is mine, when there should be no way for her to piece the two things together. I got love bombed, yes, but not by my soon-to-be ex-wife. It was someone who found me online. This person had an online presence until I decided it was moving way too fast for me, not to mention a load of unstable behaviors, and broke it off. That person and their online presence disappeared almost completely overnight. A whole blog is just no longer in existence, and the timing seems really weird. There was also an offer made for something I might have liked, but I can't get into details on that. The timing is just suspect. If I had to put a conspiracy to it, it's as if my soon-to-be ex-wife is trying to take advantage of my proclivities in order to get a better deal for the divorce. This isn't pervasive by the way. I'm not seeing this in my day-to-day -day life. Just online. Apparently, I'm difficult to talk to, which is why you tried exactly once, according to yourself, to approach me about any of the issues you felt were bearing down on you in our marriage, yet never said a damn word that these things were nagging issues we should try to fix. Apparently, everything has to be my way, which is why when you decided to change our entire family's diet every couple of years, I went along with it completely. Or when you wanted to start your own businesses with your parents I pitched in and helped build, for three months of weekends work the store, for two months of weekends per year, purchase supplies, lay concrete, buy a computer and an iPad, looked after the kids to enable you to do those things. Or when you requested I make you a latte or mocha daily and worked hard to pay attention to get it just right. 
constantly tweaking the ingredients and prep so you'd love it every time just a little more than the last. Those instances were all about me, because I like my underwear folded instead of tossed in the drawer. It's not even tit for tat, apparently. You knew nothing about our money situation despite saying you always felt like a burden and me reassuring you that we would be fine, even when you requested funds to be transferred to your account. You didn't know how much I made except that I told you every single time when I got a raise and how much I'd be getting total per year and per month. You didn't know how much stock I had except I told you how much it would be worth when it was vested after four years and kept you apprised on the share value almost weekly. You didn't know how much was in the Robinhood account except I showed it to you to say, this is going to be our vacation money in the near future. You also didn't know how much you racked up on those credit cards you never mentioned after you first got them. So when I finished paying off the ones I knew about, yours were still left over. Weird how that works. Apparently, your mom thinks I'm too strict with the kids and has never liked me. What? But she beat you with a wooden kitchen implement until you were 12 years old, and then never got you any help when you were sensually assaulted by a family member. I just yell at the kids so they don't damage property or themselves. I confess, it's because I like having them alive and not paying random amounts of money to get someone else's crap fixed. But sure, this is all my fault. Had you been an adult and tried to talk to me about any of this, it could have easily been corrected. And if I thought our marriage was ever on the line, don't you think I would have put in that time? Coward, instead you chose to cheat with a serial cheater who has his own set of kids, and now you think they're your forever family. Lady, do you ever have a surprise in store? I feel mostly sorry for his kids. They love you because you've integrated into their lives already. When you leave, or he cheats, which is where my bet lies, they're going to be devastated. That's a crappy adulting decision right there. But yeah, all of it is definitely my fault. You go on and keep churning through this alternative reality you got going. Please don't let me know how it turns out. Just do me a huge favor, don't F up our kids. Just heard from our oldest kid, she's 11, that my ex-wife's version of our divorce is she feels I took everything from her. This is after she got more than half of our savings. After the split I purchased her car for her outright so she has no car payment. I alone packed all of her belongings from our marital home into boxes and filled the garage. It was all her stuff from before the marriage or things she'd accumulated during and she never requested a date to take care of it. It all sat in my garage for over six months. She only wanted more money in the mediation and immediately gave up nearly all visitation for our kids when I obliged. I have 80% time. If I could say one thing to her, it'd be, welcome to the consequences of your own decisions. We've been split for almost four years and she's still blaming me for her decision to cheat. The worst part is hearing it from my kid, because of course they're going to believe mom when she tells them this crap. She had a baby with her AP not long after we split, and named the poor little guy after a deity of divine beauty. Like, how ridiculous can you get? To make matters worse, she wants to move herself, the AP, and his two kids, he actually has three, but kicked the oldest out of the house to another state. She would almost literally never see her biological kids. Top it all off with her AP is legally still married to his ex. She's nuts. Unfortunately, this was communicated from my daughter to a step-grandparent in confidence. I don't want my daughter to lose trust in her. The information is important enough that I needed to know, so I'm glad I was told. And yes, trust was broken. But I can't break the bond when it's still fairly new. My wife and I haven't even been married for a year. My kid needs to know she can trust her adults to look out for her, and they can keep secrets when they're appropriate. This situation isn't quite as hot as, say, verbal or physical abuse that it requires me to talk to my kid to let her know that I know what's going on, and the situation is dangerous enough that it requires immediate action. I've dealt with that once before already, maybe a story for another post. All of that to say I can't approach my daughter to make a clear and concise rebuttal. I have to wait for her to tell me directly or figure out a way to get her to repeat it, so I can give her the you don't know both sides, so don't make an incomplete conclusion suggestion. I have absolutely told my daughter that her mom has not been 100% truthful with her in other instances though. So, I imagine that's why this statement didn't come to me personally. I tend to shatter the illusion she has of this amazing mom. Hard not to when she gets lied to so consistently. There's a lot of discussions that start with, that may be mom's recollection, but here's what I remember. Eleven is too young for most kids to be told this outright, I imagine. My wife has laid the groundwork that cheating is the worst thing you can do to your person because of how it affects them. But neither of us has told our kids. She has two bio kids from a previous marriage as well, so directly that the other parent cheated to get where they are. 
her ex has told some stupid tales to their kids. For example, our love was too strong and we couldn't help it. That require tactful management. Honestly, I think it comes down to the emotional maturity of the kid. They probably shouldn't be any younger than 16 if those facts even need to be said aloud. But kids are all different. They're also pretty smart and figure stuff out on their own. Edit to add, I think my oldest already knows. She told me she hated the AP so much that she didn't even speak to him for a full year. She would leave the room when he entered. Her mom had to have a sit-down talk to have her give him a chance. She has had a therapist. They're not all created equal, unfortunately. And now that the divorce is finalized, as of 2021, my ex and I have joint conservatorship over medical matters. So, we have to agree on a therapist which is not an easy task. The therapist she had was way overstepping my boundaries with my daughter and my ex, and when confronted with that decided to pick sides. I mainly wanted her to stop sending personal letters to my daughter while she was away at camp, and to stop siding with either of us in matters where legally she had no sway. She shared personal information in those letters that didn't seem appropriate to me, and when I told her I didn't appreciate it and wanted that to stop, she accidentally sent a message to me that was meant for my ex. It said, I am hopeful that it's all bad right now, we'll make some specific alterations to the kid's schedule. Daughter wants more time with you and will take it anytime you can be together. When she is with you she is happy, also wondering if she has gained weight since the shift. It appears to be so but hard to tell on the computer. She seems more depressed and sad each week. This email happened a couple of weeks after the divorce was finalized. My ex had agreed to everything in the mediation, then started leaning on this therapist to have me make changes she just agreed to. So yes, she needs a therapist, but my ex pushes for my daughter to go back to the one who has taken my ex's side. They're people too, and can be won over by the right lies. OP, dishonesty often stems from self-centeredness and immaturity. These two factors also significantly influence responsibility. Your ex seems to adopt a victim mentality to rationalize her actions, which may increase the likelihood of repeating such behavior in the future. Instead of personal growth, she chooses to evade the situation altogether, at least mentally. When your children reach an appropriate age, you can present them with compelling evidence to reveal the truth. Currently, they are too young to comprehend these complexities. Moreover, it's important to clarify to them that their mother might say negative things about you, whether true or false, out of anger. Best of luck, and stay resilient. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.